And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest chit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us all the way from Fire Ember Games, and the current developers... Of the, up of the upcoming RTS, Amber Chronicles of Lure. The one and only Oscar Gutierrez. How are you doing today, man? <laughs> fine, I'm fine. Thank you so much for inviting me to the monastery. Um, well, for your audience, sorry for my English, but I will try to ask all your questions and, and entertain them all as much as we can. <laughs> right. So, i like to start with the humble beginnings, as it were. Now, okay. Amber is is very much a um a R a RTS that's in that's in the vein of as you as you mentioned on the Kickstarter page, Warcraft three, Starcraft, and Age of Empires. Um, yeah. Where did the where did the idea to do this particular endeavor really kick off? Yeah, well, uh, my partner and I. We were talking about about how can we make a game and which kind of game we we could we could produce, and we thought that has passed a long time since last big RTS Warcraft 3, mainly mainly competitive one. There is a long time ago. There is no one with with a lot of people playing. Maybe there is a um, a community of StarCraft 2 playing still at, at some point competitive level, but uh, we think that there is a lot of people that are trying to to get a new RTS competitive. Mm -hmm. um, um, that was somehow how the the idea started to take some form. Yeah. And. I think given given the given you mentioned Warcraft three, would it be even though there's obviously multiple um, inspirations with it? Would you say that Warcraft three was the was the um, dominant pillar when it came to your inspirations? Yeah, well, uh, we want to make a new formula. Mm -hmm. So our biggest inspiration there are three games. Uh, in one pillar is Warcraft three. Uh, in the meaning of how how they behave with the tempo and how they handle the their units somehow. Another pillar is uh, World of Warcraft, in the sense of how the world is built. So we want to make a world with a lot of lore um, and with deep stories in each character, and the other pillar and we think it's essential too with the modern games if league of legends in league of legends uh, when you play the the game feel is is really uh, polished i i i don't know how to express when you play this kind of games mm -hmm. you feel the response of the of the heroes and you feel how well implemented is the the magic, the movement, the, all all that kind of stuff. So we want to translate this kind of sense to a more classical RTS approach. And now, when it comes now, when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the world itself, the world of lore. Yeah. Um, now. One of the things, one of the things that it that it kind of goes in, that kind of goes into on the page is the over exploitation of amber. So, yeah. from both a lore and from a mechanical perspective, how imp how important is amber? Yeah, uh, in our general mind is uh, the the step barrier of of, of the entrance of the game mm -hmm. uh, usually is hard so if we can keep the the resources to one or maybe two uh, could be best so we are making amber so important in fact actually 
uh, we only have one resource that is Amber and it is used for all. You have to, to control the minds of Amber. You have to, to spend to create troops. Um, and well, you, you can spend in, in some other ways uh, building, building, well, building builds. <laughs> um, for that reason, we only want uh, one main type of income. So for new players, it's easier to, to pick and say, OK, I, I need to, to collect Amber. And I need to, to recruit troops and, and make some buildings. So it's, it's really important for us. We are focusing all the action and all the resources in, in Amber. And then to evolve our troops, for example, Mm -hmm. We will have another pseudo resource that will be called, I don't know, maybe uh, Faith of the Gods or something. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's provisional, the name. Now, when, now um, when, it comes to, when it comes to the gods, of, of course, I, know, I, um, I noted that there were... And would it be also fair to say that the... That, um, that those eight play a f play a factor in the mechanics as well, given that you guys are trying to go for this um, unified approach. About the faction, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, well, I have been playing. I I have been semi professional mm -hmm. chess player, so I have um, I I have traveled around the world. Uh, in tournament of chess, so we have some inspiration of of what could be a chess game. That means uh, if we have a lot of factions, but they share almost the same attributes, it's easy to to pick uh, because if you if you have a lot of different factions, mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard to understand what what each one. Uh, each ability, it's it's single details. It's really hard. For that reason, we want to make all the factions to be really similar. Um, keeping in mind that we want to evolve the game, adding a faction, it's really hard to balance if they are different. For example, in, in Warcraft 3 or StarCraft 2, uh, adding a four or five faction is really hard to, to keep competitive. So in our approach, we want to make them similar with some some perks to make them different. Just mm -hmm. it's similar to a Age of Empires uh, 2 approach, I think. I, I can't remember if, if it's Age of Empires 2 or 3. Maybe you remember. Uh, but it's it's more like the this approach than than Warcraft three. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you you mentioned make, making the um making a making a similarity when it comes to the when it comes to the factions. But at at the same time, are you guys are you guys aiming for them to be to be similar but dif but different enough from each other so that it doesn't blend? Yeah, that is a difficult question. It's hard to balance that, that two things because if you make them similar, mm -hmm. it's easy to for the player to to understand all the faction mm -hmm. because it will be almost the same. But uh, you cannot customize them. So I think for the moment we have two main options. One of them will be. Uh, each faction will have um, a bonus on some of the stats, for example, uh, plus 10 uh, physical resist, just saying one. And the other approach we are, we are thinking about is uh, as each troop has three abilities, are the same for, for all the factions. Mm -hmm. We could make some of the abilities as, as some of the abilities depending on on the faction to be upgraded somehow so they will feel different and that could give us enough customization to feel different when you are playing 
a faction or another. For example, uh, with the range unit, the the second the second ability is uh, increase uh, range increase. Mm -hmm. If you have range range increase when you are playing, it, that's something noticeable. So they are our two main concerns uh, for now. But we have to test it really. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to evolve with the community and, and with the and with the game. Take, and taking the, taking that into account, some sometimes there's the temptation in in other RTSs and other strategy games as a whole to have one faction that ends up being the van, the vanilla faction, the beginner faction. Um, yeah. Is that something that you? That you get that you guys have have uh, cons have considered. Well, uh, for that reason, we have uh, the commanders uh, in our games. We we want to to make a fast paced uh, action mm -hmm. uh, uh, because some RTS there is a lot of introduct well building time uh, without firing. You have to to take the recurs the resources, you have to build the miners, you have to build all the buildings, and then you start to recruit uh, some troops and then the hero. Uh, we want to short that that time lapse lapse because we want our games to be like 15 minutes or 20 max. Uh, we are aiming for for a more fast paced uh, uh, game. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, um, we want we, we want all to be almost the same, but but we want our commanders since the beginning once one make easier for for the people to start with them. For example, Amara is some some commander is one commander that it's easier to is easier to pick than another. Uh, we are focusing our effort in a skill cap with with commanders and the troops will be something that you have to learn how to how to handle them but the main skill cap and or, or gap will be in the commanders mm -hmm. and speaking of that when it comes to when it comes to um, commanders there's been there's there's been a few instances I've I've seen in some other RTSs where the com where um command where commanders or or hero units end up take end up having a bit more of a sh a bit more of a shine than um th than the rest of the units in that in that faction. Yeah. It, are you guys um taking taking lengths to make sure that while commanders are certainly going to be a large factor, they're not gonna overshadow the rest of the units. Yeah, that that's a thing that really concerned me a lot, and I'm a little worried about that because the design of our commanders are really shiny, as you say. But for the same reason, I I will take a, an example for the chess also. Mm -hmm. uh, in chess, uh, you have many pieces, and um, for us, uh, commanders are queen. Is like your most powerful piece is your commander, mm -hmm. but in the total damage output or the total, uh, I don't know how to express it, in, in the global war, it's it will be around 20% of the, of the army. Should be around that. So if it's not so much, uh, well, I, I'm not sure if it's so much because we need a lot of uh, games to to see if, if it's a lot or not. But we aim uh, around 20% of the of the army to be to be the commander. Which I can I can definitely make some, make some make some sense out of that, especially since the the way the commanders are sh are shown on the Kickstarter page, each of them, yep. it's very it's very clear that they have a play style that they lean towards. Yeah. Um. Now, when it com now when it comes to tr when it comes to troops, obviously you've got obviously you've got um, you've got a you've got a range of types. 
Um, but what? But would it be fair? Would it be fair of me to say that the approach that you guys are go going with when it comes to individual troops that it's that um that each one, that each one of those types will have its own upgrade tree, or yeah. or are we or are you going to be dealing with something a little more traditional when it comes to um troops? Well, that thing really was the hardest part to design the 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 troops uh, when when evolving into the game uh, because we wanted to to make the the troops feel different in each game and and at some degree we have the the troops adapt to your strategy so uh, in the end we have say we we have done the following thing mm -hmm. uh, troops have three different abilities all the factions have the same three abilities but in the game when your troops level up you level up one of them for example in, in melee units you have a strong melee attack mm -hmm. uh, increases defenses is a uh, passive and the third one always is with charge uh, they can cancel uh, an ability a magic ability from the enemy so you can specialize your troops taking into account what the the rival is doing or, or what is best uh, for your for your strategy for example asmodemon is a commander that uh, his passive benefits from having a lot of uh, melee troops with high damage so for that kind if, if you want to be an aggressive player you can play with asmodemon mm -hmm. and you can play with a lot of melee unit troops and level up uh, with melee attack so you will do tons of damage. If on the opposite, opposite, if you want to cancel some key abilities, you could train your melee troops into into defensive one, so they can cancel the enemy's abilities and, and protect your rank range and, and magic troops, for example. And there you what now? Um, given that you brought up um, chess a few times, I'm I'm yeah. I can start I can start to see the analog when it comes to the when it comes to the types of units. Um, obviously me melee being being akin to pawns. Melee, yeah. <laughs> um. Well, okay, well, okay. There's not exactly a range equip a range equivalent when it comes to when it comes yeah. to chess. Um, range will be pawn also. Mm -hmm. um, magic un magic units. Um, Bishop. Just, yeah, bishops. El elites. Um, elites. Rooks. Yeah, elites, rooks, and um, beasts. Knights. knights will be knights. Yes, and, and the king will be the base. Yeah. Um, when it when it comes to elites and beasts, because that was that was something that I was that was thinking where they where they could lean a little bit close into each other potentially, at least yeah. in the way that they were described. Would it be would it be fair to say that elites are more aggressive, whereas beasts are more tanky? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we want to elite has the role more more easily oriented really because uh, the, the the main reason for elite is to to create some crowd control to the enemy commander and um, if the enemy commander is so tanky uh, to provide some way to lower the the uh, its resistance it's, it's the main goal for the for the elite also uh, it, they will be making a lot of damage but the main purpose of the of this unit is to to make crowd control soft crowd control in 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 a way of slow and lowering the resistance and the um, the the creatures the creatures uh, at some point we want to to make uh, neutral objectives makes important like a dragon or something like that mm -hmm. so when you defeat defeat the, this dragon or this monster it's something similar to moba uh, you pick up um, 
um, Power Core or whatever, each faction or Magical Egg, for example, of Renegades. And then you can create your creature and then your creature help uh, in a more defensive way to to try to lead the the big uh, a big offensive against the the enemy army. Yeah. Now, when when it comes um, when it comes to uh oh, magic when it comes to uh magic units, given the given the fact that they that could he that they could potentially heal or cause damage from a distance. Um, yeah. Aside aside from possibly healing or or buffing, what what would be some of the other things that ma that magic units would do so that they don't fall entirely in the same category as um as just doing ranged attacks? Yeah. Well, uh, for magical units, uh, we have two main categories. One of them will be. Uh, AOE damage, A AOE damage, mm -hmm. like our Reign of Fire, and the other main category will be healing. So you can specialize in, in one of them, or the third one that will be that will be affect to the area of the of the effects, uh, positive or negative, but uh, they both will be range, uh, range healing or range uh, damage abilities. Mm -hmm. Now, um, obvious, obviously, obviously, base building is going is, go is going to be an imp is going to be an important um, motif. Motif. And yeah. When it and when it comes to when it comes to um, ba when it comes to base building, um, mm -hmm. you did now. If I recall correctly, you mentioned that the main re the main resource that's get that's going to be utilized is um amber yeah um even even with <clears throat> even with even with even with that um what fa what fact what factor would it would um would some would some of the other buildings play when it comes to when it comes to expanding and upgrading your um your for your forces during play Okay, the building part we want to keep it minimized because uh, in other games uh, you spend a lot of time building your base, upgrading your base, and less time uh, fighting and, and making fun things. I, we we definitely think that the most fun things that you can making this type of games mm -hmm. are creeping, fighting, skirmishing, and and we want um, to put an effort towards that direction. So uh, we will have buildings, obviously, but we will keep uh, this, uh, this part of the game as minimized as possible. We will have some defensive options, but mm -hmm. really we don't want to to make games so long that you can turtle and and you need to spend an hour to to break the the defenses. Um, basically, you can choose which which build you can you can build first, um, and then you can upgrade or make some defenses on on the buildings. But we are not making a, a lot of effort to uh, to put. A, a lot of attention on, on this part. It, it's just you need uh, somewhere to to create to re, to recruit troops um, to to make your technology re, uh, research. So you need that buildings. But aside from that, is a really less impactful part of our game. And. Taking that into account, would you would you say that um, Amber leans into more ag into more aggressive style play or more, more slash more offensive style play than really being a being a very defensive style approach? Well, I I mean with that, not uh, you can play defensively, but uh, since the beginning of the game, 
you have your commander and you can choose to go to creep you can choose to build your defenses mm -hmm. you can choose to fight for for a mine or, or make a skirmis in that way you can choose but always uh, in the action part not just i I, I, I will be taking resources for long. I'm, I'm planning my strategy. It's like, okay, I want to be defensive. Okay, but I need to level up, level up my hero to defend my base. So I, I can go to kill all the creeps um, and maybe set up a couple of mines mm -hmm. and then back to defend my base uh, once I have leveled up a couple of time and I have leveled up maybe a couple of troops so I can set up my defense. That kind of defense style is it will be the most common, I think, but uh, not in in the in the way that you can build a giant fortress so anyone can surpass the these defenses. In the way you can you need to evolve your commander even if you want to defend your base mm -hmm. that's the meaning of, uh, a little bit of the of the game yeah now something that i did something that i did find interesting that you get that you guys have is the is the um, progression system that you're that you're working with yeah and in particular with that and let me let me see if i can grant I'm gonna need to do a bit of scrolling so I can get the image in yeah. front of me. Um, it For commanders, more, it had more. It had more to do with the with the um eight with the eightfold um progress with the eightfold progression that you guys have. That whole that whole exp that whole expanding um circle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's just a graphical illustration of, mm -hmm. of how it will be in the game. Yeah. In reality, it's a little simpler than it seems, uh, but well, with a full of possibilities. If you see, there is a, a GIF, a little more up. Mm -hmm. uh, every time you level up, you have to choose between three perks. Yep. Uh, then, that leads to the to that graphic that represents each of one of of the options you have take in each level. But in reality, when you are playing, it's just okay. I level up. I have to choose between three perks. Some of them will be very simple. For for example, uh, five physical attack, five physical uh, magical damage, and five. Uh, is movement speed, yeah. For uh, telling some, yep. with we want to make with with this system, we don't want objects in our game, because objects is a really hard barrier uh, to enter in a game. For example, League of Legends, when you start, uh, there is like I don't know, eighty, one hundred items. Mm -hmm. It's it's impossible to understand all of them. You need a lot of games um, and you can feel totally lost. So with this system, uh, you have to make a little different uh, choices every time you level up. Mm -hmm. And there will be all diff uh, a little modification. I, I don't know. I, I remember uh, somehow it, it's a, a lot of more complicated and more complex. Yeah. But there is a, a game... Uh, popular for Android, it's Archero. I don't know if, if I'm spelling it correct or if you know about this game. But well, anyway, it's the time you level up. Mm -hmm. You have to choose uh, to earn a new ability. For example, in this game, in Archero, it's like, OK, I shoot two arrows now, or I shoot in a, in a cone, or something like that. In, in our game, when you have to choose abilities, some of them will be related to the troops. For example, I level up and I can choose every time 
three attacks of the troops uh, deals damage to the opponent, uh, they will burn uh, for three seconds, something like that. There are little modification mo modification of the of the behavior and mm -hmm. for the troops and and how they deal the damage, but there there won't be any bad choice. There will be only good choices and best choices suited for your strategy, and you need to know deeply which one will be the best. But all of them will be somehow useful for you. Mm -hmm. So, to make things even easier, uh, the main goal of this system is, okay, you start your game and you have to pick uh, one god. That means, okay, this game, I want Amara to be tank. So, mm -hmm. I, I can choose the life god, so I will have a lot of life. Um, and this first pickup will in somehow uh, leads to to your main goal about the game. For example, I want Amara this game to deal a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Then you pick the the goddess of of damage, for example. Yeah. And and I do I do have to correct myself because the image I was looking for wasn't on the Kickstarter page itself. It was on the um, Twitter account. It at it was the, it was this image specifically. Which I'm I'm sending you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I was that's what I was looking for when it came to commander um, progression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And when it now I now uh, would it, I realize that um game manuals are a are a lost art these days, but when it comes to the when it comes to the um guide end of things, is that do you get are you guys going to be planning to put to put out a um, full tree presentation on on that so that people can start start to refine play because you know you know you probably know as well as any how how it is when pe when people start really digging into metas yeah <laughs> yeah 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 definitely we would love to to make some happy a official app to to just to to play with the with all the trees make all the augmentation and mm -hmm. uh, yeah well, we definitely want to provide to the community an easier way to to share also these builds uh, i i we have made that uh, keeping in mind that kind of stuff and we want since release to to make a, our official ap to to this to this progression system mm -hmm. so people can share and you can import to your own and uh, that will be easy so you can you can just copy from the pro or if you are interested in some is a specific field mm -hmm. you can copy and you can forget about how they progress along the along the way we are making not only this system uh, semi-automatic if you want uh, another systems uh, we want to to be also semi-automatic or or manually activated depends of the taste of the of the player. Probably at the beginning of the game, there will be some systems like this one that will be automated. But as you progress to the game, you can manually uh, perform each of, of of the of the choices. Which I I can I can definitely get get that now. When it com now um when it comes to up when it comes to upgrading regular when it comes to upgrading regular units well and I'm, and by regular I mean non commander units will they operate under a, under a similar kind of progression of choosing of choosing different perks or is their upgrading a bit more linear? Will be totally different. <laughs> uh, if, if we have think we have thought about this topic a lot. Um, and it's really hard because if you have to level up many times with the troops, it uh, will be a nightmare because there are so many choices. So for troops, it's more simple. Each time you level up a troop, you just level one of the abilities. Uh, if, like if a MOBA is, is, is saying the first ability, the second ability, and the third ability. So, uh, 
in fact, you can build, uh, you can make some builds uh, because you can level up uh, up to five or six times each troop. So any of the troops will be really different depending of which stats are you leveling. For example, in the the range the range troop, uh, the the three abilities. The first one, there is a rapid shot, three three arrows in in association. Well, well, uh, for renegades, for other faction will be rocks or whatever. Three projectiles that deals damage to the troops mainly. The second ability is range, so you can improve their range and you can shoot from afar. And the third one is a, a hard projectile that deals a lot of damage to commanders. So if in one, in one game you want you, you need damage against, against the commander, you can improve your archers five times into dealing more damage to commanders. So with this system, you have endless possibilities because there is a lot of troops. Um, there is three, three abilities in each one. And all combined, you have really a lot of options, aggressive and defensively. It de depends on the, of your strategy and if you want to adapt to, to your opponent strategy. Will be just leveling one of the of the abilities. All right, I, I got it. now you now one of the other pillars that I note that I noticed that you guys have been focusing on is the is the competitive end of things. Yep. Um, when it whether it be whether it be just whether it be just the modes or other, or other group, other group activities. Um, Later now, obviously, this is this isn't something that's gonna that's gonna happen in the next few days. But hmm. down the line, do you have do you have plans on doing uh, on putting out videos for um, for for multiplayer matches? <laughs> well, we'll definitely love to do that. Mm -hmm. But at the current state of the game, it's hard for us to to show a. Uh, uh, a match, <laughs> a fully match, because we we have some issue with the touch part, and uh, we need to solve. Um, uh, we we really can't do that for the moment. Yeah. We will try to do as soon as possible. We will aim for a couple of months to to show uh, the first uh, two three months, uh, the first uh, full gameplay. That that will be really great for us. Mm -hmm. So, but for the moment, we we can. That's that's the truth. <laughs> which is which is um something that I predicted. Like I like I said, I'm not expecting I'm not expecting that yet. But mm -hmm. but just thinking but just thinking um long term on the matter. Um, yeah. And given. Given that um, you're, you've talked about do, you've talked about doing um, cus, custom maps yeah. in the community and end of the uh, Kickstarter, um, do you is one of the things that you have planned for the future the possibility of um, community showcasing, like showcasing some showcasing somebody's map every now and again on your social medias? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we want two things with custom maps. One thing is all the community create is for community. Mm -hmm. Is there is a, a map that is played a lot. Um, um, somehow it appears a new game like happened with with Dota. Okay, great, great for the community. We love them, and it's okay for us. So all the work that the community is, is is put in the in the game is for them. Um, of course, e e even if, if some maps are really popular, that I'm sure it will be, because the world is so big. So many people will create amazing maps. Uh, just just for example, if if you think about uh, Super Mario. Uh, 
uh, I, I I forgot the name. Super Mario. How is the name? I don't know. Super, wait. Super Mario Maker. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, I forgot the name. Super Mario Maker. Uh, you see the, the, the community creating amazing things. We want the same for our game to create, to share, to interact with, with others, even create tournament ar around some some special maps showcasing some of them yeah yeah definitely we we would want to do that in fact we we want to give to the community as much as we can mm -hmm. and when it when it comes to, now obviously obviously there it you've mentioned the standard um modes be, whether it be 1v1 2v2 or 3v3 but when it comes to when it comes to um, custom maps and how, and how they're used, um, are you considering the possibility of customizing uh, match types? Yes. Yes, in fact, um, what we want with custom maps is just if you want to change some rules of if you want to start with whatever with a lot of money or that kind of stuff mm -hmm. we we definitely want to to provide uh, a really powerful map editor so people can play as they want and um, they can play their maps and share with their with their friends and, and whatever they want to do so we were listening closely to what community needs to make better maps mm -hmm. and, they, and we will try to provide them with, with all the tools that they need. Yes. Now, when it, <clears throat> since we meant, since we mentioned Amber as the, as the primary resource, when it comes to the, when it comes to the map setups, um, is it, is it a case where, um, the main, the easiest way to get in a, to get a significant advantage in a match is, is controlling where controlling points where amber can be found or or is it go, or is it going to be more of controlling um waypoints and territory it will be more amber oriented but uh, there is like two or three approaches to that because uh, obviously you need amber but uh, you also need to improve your troops Mm -hmm. Then you have to choose if you want to uh, level up your troops over getting more amber. So you have to choose carefully uh, what you want or what want you want to deny to the opponent. Um, you will have some different options, but mainly the, the main resource obviously will be will be the mines, and you need the workers to to extract the the amber. But you also as you need to level up your commander and your troops, you you need to keep an eye on on that part that is maybe not so so physical. I, I don't know how to to express, but but you also have to keep in, in mind that that part of the game. All right. Now, when it um. When it comes to the when it comes to the in, the individual factions, um, I wanted to I wanted to go into to each and um a, and ask if there are if there are certain strategies or play styles that they favor. I think uh, the main difference between the faction and their play style will be the commanders. Mm -hmm. We have designed all the commanders. Yeah, and this is one of the main difference with or with uh, all greatest titles like Warcraft 3. Mm -hmm. Our commanders uh, interact very well with the troops. There are some kinds or or sense of army. For example, uh, Gormov, uh, he can consume his own troops. So the, the play style is like, okay, this commander has to be really powerful. So even if he has to, to consume his own troops, uh, they will be gaining power. It's, it's a, a total different play style than, for example, Haruaki. Haruaki mainly uh, is a support healer for the troops. 
so all the troops should be around him and uh, he can protect them. Uh, the main playstyle will be the commander more than the faction. All, all right. And with that, with that, with that in with that in with that in mind, um, like I, I know that I know since you mentioned league, I know that they have the whole habit of um have of having you try and level up the ab the abilities and and alts um as you as you progress. But I'm guessing that with the commanders, you ha you have their full host of you have their full row of abilities at the start. Yeah, we we have not sure if let the the ultimate abilities uh, from the start. Mm -hmm. Probably, maybe you have to level a couple of times, two or three times. And we are not sure about about which level will be good to to have the 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 ultimate ability available. Mm -hmm. So the the rest of them uh, will be from the start, and you don't need to level one uh, to to level each of of them individually they will level up as as you level uh, as the commander level which def definitely makes a f definitely makes a fair a fair amount of of sense um now when it com when it comes to when, it, when now for something like this um map design is a big is a big deal for me as it as it is for most people when playing and when playing any sort of game that that relies on well map control um mm -hmm. and with that in mind would it be fair to would it be fair to say that you're not taking the league approach to maps where everything everything revolves around the lanes well uh, we don't have minions for example so it's totally different from from a MOBA. So in, in that part, we we don't have all we don't have towers. So it's it's more a classical R T S approach. You go into into the open field, uh, and you have to fight just uh, for the things that are interest for for everyone that are mines and are and are creeps. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more in, in that way it's like Warcraft 3. You you start with an open map and the, the main difference in that aspect in that aspect is that you start with a commander. So you can start creeping and you you can start uh, going for the mines or fighting and and that kind of, st of stuff. But this be very different from a MOBA. Mhm. Mm yeah, I think I think it's one of those things that that um that needs to be made clear because as you mentioned, it's been a while since there was a tr since there was a very competitive um RTS, and for a lot and that means that there's a generation that didn't get their start with say with say Warcraft or Star or Starcraft, and um mostly get and mostly are used to the approach that something like league or dota 2 has so yeah. th so there would be a bit of um unlearning in that regard and to th to that end um i've often had a i've often had a running joke for the longest time that the that for a lot of games the campaign is just a glorified tutorial for the multiplayer would it be fair <laughs> of me to say that that is not something that you guys haven't have in mind to do no uh, we definitely don't. It's not what we want for the campaign. Mm -hmm. For the campaign, we have two main goals. First one, uh, you can attach somehow to the to the characters uh, with the history or and what happens in in each of the of the of the games of the campaign. Mm -hmm. So you can know how they are and how and why they are that way, how they evolve also. And the another main goal for us is to show what the lure, the the, the, the world of lure can offer. For example, in in one game of the campaign, maybe you are controlling a group of renegades that have to to fight against 
uh, 100 balls that are invading a city or something like that, probably campaign will be really different uh, than multiplayer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, campaign is mainly focused to know the history, to know the world, and then you can build your own world with custom map or you can just learn how multiplayer uh, will be and start compete, uh, start com compete, whatever you want. Yeah, I get, I, I can do that. Um, and when it comes to when it, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the campaign, is it is it a case where each um, faction is going to have their own? their own campaign story or is it go or are different chapters going to focus on different factions we want each faction to have the their own campaign uh, we know it's a lot of effort and we need a lot of money to to do that but it's something that if we have enough funds to to do we will make a one game campaign for each faction and they will be intertwined so our goal is that uh, each time you play uh, in the campaign and you change faction, for example, if it has been a war in, in I don't know, if in a cliff or something, um, for some circumstances, a dragon appear and, and burn the ground, then, for example, when, when another faction go there, uh, maybe there is all isolated by fire because of the dragon and the and the war. That we, we want the campaign to feel that evolve with the with, with the facts that the, they are living, or if there is a war, then there will be more more aerial or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's so, that's something I can de I can definitely. Um... I can definitely see and I can definitely get behind. Um, when it now, when it com when it comes to when it came when it came to when it came to um, buildings, um, a lot of ca a lot of games that will that have buildings in one form or another have um, full on tech trees. Is that something that you guys are taking into account, or you or do you intend on? going a bit simpler with your approach? Well, that's really something that I'm personally worried about. Um, we have a tech uh, building mm -hmm. that you can improve a lot of things uh, similar to, to R RTS games. Mm -hmm. But we are worried if it's too difficult for someone that is not really into the RTS world so for now, our approach is that in in uh, in our tech building, you can improve something uh, locked to the god you have chose. So it's really simple, maybe free attack for everyone in the army, something like that. It's a, a simple option, but uh, we want also to develop a big tree behind. Uh, in a way uh, that is accessible to everyone. We are not sure how to to make those steps because uh, uh, if if you put to the player like fifty option to to the star, there is some game that you evolve your choices as. Uh, de depending on, on what are you evolving. For example, I remember in, in Age of Empires 2 or 3, uh, you can build some tech and there uh, 2 or 3 are unlocked, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, probably we'll, we will take a, a path like that. Probably. All right, I, I can know. I can, cer I can certainly see that. Now... At the t at the time of me rec at the time of this recording, you guys were you guys were um, initially asking for fifty thousand um, euro, and you mm -hmm. are cur you are currently getting very close to that at four at forty nine point one thousand. Um, yeah. 
now, presume now um, presuming that on December that on December second, ev everything's um cleared off. Um, what would be what would be the what would be the release window that you guys would be shooting for for at the very least, the um the early crack at the at the game for um for backers. Uh, we want all the backers to be involved in the game mm -hmm. at uh, November 2021 in the in the first alpha. We think uh, the backers will will be able to to play the game at that point. And I got I I am I am def I'm definitely going to be keeping a cl keeping a close eye on how it how it develops at that t at that time. And I do I do think that there will there will certainly be some interesting res some interesting um, results throughout it. But yeah, we we hope so. <laughs> it's hard, we know, but but well, we have a lot of things done, and we have the core game all uh, already uh, in action. So we think that is doable. And with and um, like it, like I said, I um, I'll be keeping a close eye on how on how it develops, and I do wish you all the. Be I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say the best of luck because I'm not gonna jinx. Because because the la the last thing any last thing anybody needs is j is jinxing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um. But I also noticed that there that there was a volume set up when it came to the lore book with the first um, lore book available on the um, Kickstarter page, um, mm -hmm. Chronicles of Lure. Um, as as the game develops, do you plan on adding additional lore books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to make a big lore book, mm -hmm. um, but some of the lore we are revealing in the campaign. We want to 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 players to to evolve with the with the characters to learn about the lore uh, mainly in the campaign, mm -hmm. but also we will uh, we will release the uh, lore book. Um, it's quite big right now, so in a couple of years <laughs> could be could be more than one thousand pages. <laughs> oh, Oh, the vault. Oh, well, vo well, that's it. that's going to be that's going to be quite an undertaking since the um, first volume is only eleven pages. Yeah. Well, we have already like two hundred pages. Oh well. Too, well, touche then. Yeah. <laughs> but with that, with that in, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the mists of time zones. To come all the way up to the temple. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Uh, anytime you see fit to re to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!